Hello there and welcome to my little arty corner on YouTube. My name's Angela, Angela Porter. I'm an artist and I'm perhaps best known for my colouring books. Uh, co the Colour Me Calm or the Colour Me series with Lacey Mucklow and also many books in the Creative Haven series such as Entangled, intricately, Insanely Intricately Entangled Landscapes, I think that was the name of one, um, Entangled Butterflies, Entangled Dragonflies and my latest one is um, Whimsical Cats um, and Adorable Dogs is out now I think even though I only finished it a couple of months ago it seems like there's normally a much longer lead time on books so there we are but many other publishers as well and I like to draw and I draw every day I draw for fun for my for my own relaxation I draw to hone my observational skills sometimes or to get my imagination out or just for practice or for soothing it's it's what I do but I used to be a teacher and as a teacher I, I still like to help people to develop their own skills and to find confidence and things and a bit of self-belief that was always at the core of my my focus as a teacher now before I go any further I'd like to apologize for yes for the last video because something happened to the sound after a few minutes and I have no idea what all I know is that the software I'm using was a bit finickety yesterday, so I don't know what that was about either. Fingers crossed everything will be fine today. A Wednesday, it is Wednesday, it's the 13th of April, 2022 still. And on Wednesdays, I draw the colouring template to be released on Thursdays into the Angela Porter's Colouring Book Fans Facebook group. And I've already drawn my template this week. In fact, I've got two. I've got one for next week because this is what I do sometimes when I wake up at silly o'clock. What I thought I'd do is to share some of the motifs with you that you might like to draw for yourself and um, to use them yourself. I'm just moving some stuff out the way. Um, I've got my A5 Hannah Muller DNS sketchbook out here. I have got the template somewhere where I can see it if I peer over the top of my glasses and I just thought that it would be something nice to do step by step. How about that? So let me start with quite a simple flower. Now I know I haven't shown you. I say simple. I say everything's simple and I know that it's not always that simple for people but one step at a time and practice these things do become a lot easier to do. But this one really is quite simple. I'm going to start with, well, in this case, three teardrop shapes arranged like this. They don't have to be equidistant. I've put three in. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw around them a wavy kind of line like that. And then I'm going to pop one like this. So I can start from the middle and work my way out, but I can also start from the outside if I want to make sure of placement. I'm just going to draw a vaguely wobbly line there. I'm going to draw one inside it. And then I'm going to use these lobes as a guide of where I want to have my little teardrop shapes going. Now I've used teardrop shapes. You could use circles, you could use hearts. In fact, let's do one that is kind of heart shaped. And look at that, I've got a really well wiggly line there. So it really isn't that important if you how you how wiggly you make it if you put lots of lumps and bumps, you know, like sudden humps there. And this one I think could actually have four in, but the fourth heart has got to be tucked under there. So if I do the hearts arranged in a group of three perhaps, and then I can, you can see how I'm just giving a little dip down where the hearts dip down there, and then I can just go around this create that border 
I like flowers like this. I do. And we could have leaf shapes perhaps instead of teardrop shapes. And then this one, we've got five of them because, well, there's no rules as to how many you can pop there. If you can fit them in a ring and it makes you happy, I say in a ring, if you can fit them in an, you know, in an arrangement in the centre of a flower and it makes you happy, that's fine by me. It's your drawing, your world, your imaginary flowers, because I don't think any of these actually exist. They do look a bit like seed pods or fruits cut across the middle, but in my world, they're lovely flowers. So another fairly simple flower. This time I'm going to start with a star in the middle, five-pointed star. If you're not confident in drawing that in pen, draw it in pencil first and go over it. The same with all of this. I've got the confidence of drawing in pen. Um, things like this, I do it all the time, basically because I get really frustrated with having to ink in pencil, unless it's digital inking and then I can cope. But um, when I work on paper, I prefer to work in pen, mainly because it doesn't smudge. Well, it does smudge until it's dry, but when it's dry, it doesn't smudge. So when things are stored, they stay pristine. Pencil has a habit of smudging, though I've got new leads from Uniball. Can't remember what they're called, but they're supposedly um, difficult to smudge. And it seems to be the case, but I haven't used them that often yet. Anyway, so around this one, instead of, I'm not going to make a wobbly shape like this. I'm just going to draw a circular shape. Now this is akin to the tangle pattern Moonberry, but I'm, I'm not going to draw an aura around this and leave it as that. I'm going to draw some lines to represent petals like this. That actually looks like a sea urchin like that. So it's a sea urchin flower, or it could be a sea urchin. But I'm also going to put some lines like this. And then these will look a bit more like petals, especially if I thicken that end to suggest perhaps these are curved round a little bit at the end. If you want more petal shaped, then draw the circle in pencil and draw these as petal shapes. I'll show you what I mean. So if I draw my pencil line in here, I can pop this five pointed star wherever I like. I've drawn these so many times, I get them more or less similar in shape each time. They do go a bit to pot. Um, it's practice. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw lines out towards the outside edge of the, pet of the petal of the circle where I want the petals to be. And I'm going to draw those 10 lines in as I did. But now I'm going to join these so they look more like petals. Now, I know I can be accused of teaching granny to suck eggs, as the old saying goes, but not everybody thinks of this or knows this. And if you've come from Zentangle, it's not something that Zentangle encourages the use of a pencil drawing things it tends to be more for drawing strings which are the the guidelines for filling in with patterns so we've got something here that's a bit more um and i'm not saying that's bad that's the zentangle method i'm not teaching zentangle i may use zentangle patterns i may use some ideas from zentangle but i am not a zentangle teacher and these definitely aren't zentangle patterns but they could be because they're fairly simple but as far as I know, they're not. Anywho, using the pencil definitely isn't a Zentangle thing, which is fine because that's Zentangle. This is my sketchbook and I'm, I'm determined to build people's confidence and it's OK to use a pencil. I'm an artist and that's what we do from time to time. Well, I do. And I'm now wittering on about nothing much. These can be embellished. I kept in the colouring template, I've actually kept them fairly simple. But if I draw this again, and this time I've made my star 
spikier on the ends, you know, narrower. So it perhaps looks a little bit more like a... Actually, I'll do just a circle in ink this time. So what I do with this, I can apply to the other one as well. So, or to anything really. So I've got all of these sections here and I could draw small versions of petals in here like this. I could pop stamen in, hearts, circles, teardrops, teardrops the other way, leaf shapes, anything you like can go will go there. I could put some stripes in the section or I could just add extra lines to create a more definite division between the sections and much much more and of course each of these sections can remain plain or they can be patterned as well options so if I go and draw another one before I forget myself what I can do. Let's get this in. I'll draw the lines fairly straight this time. It's by curving them as if it's you're moving your pen around a ball. You get that feeling here like these are bending over a little bit. And you've got that kind of feeling that this might not be a flat surface. It may be have some curvature to it. But here I'm just going to leave them like this. And what I'm going to do here is I am going to go along. I'm going to add another line to each side. So I've got these definite sections. And then with a finer pen, because that one is quite broad, it's actually becoming this sig uh, Mangaka flexible fine one is actually becoming my new favourite pen compared to the um, the Pentel brush pens but I've ordered a pile of each of them and another one because I'm getting through them at a fast rate of knots which is fine but here we can actually fill these in with patterns so um, let's pop some perks in this is a Zentangle pattern that is lovely to fill spaces with. You tuck, it's like you've got little balls, little squishy balls that you tuck in, squeeze in and tuck behind one another. And that tucking behind one another can help to give a feeling of volume as well. So the one, the one in the series that is whole feels like it's the one that's at the top and the others are are falling away so this feels here like this is the crest of a curve and these are gradually falling away as if they're you know that they're arranged in a ring as it were so I do like a bit of perk like I like some perkiness in my drawings I find circles are oh, they're just lovely shapes they're very versatile very organic and you don't have to draw them perfectly. We're not using geometric tools. This isn't the only way, though, we can fill this space. We could fill this with, I'm going to pop some zigzags in this one. And I could just pop smaller triangles in there and perhaps shade those in or colour them in or fill them with black. We can also add zigzags did you see what I did there I noticed that if I drew a line from the point of this star across I'd make a triangle so rather than awkwardly start this end or this side at the top I started here and it just made it natural so we've got this um what's I going to do with this one leave one side plain and on the other side fill it with pattern and of course we can 
do my favourite, which is Shattuck, which is to fill the space like this in zigzaggy form. Fill a zigzag with lines. The other option, the other thing that I like to do in spaces like this is to use the Zentangle pattern between. So I'm starting, I'm imagining where this line is and I'm having a line that bends outwards at the top a little bit. I go to this side, follow that line up and having it bend to meet the other one and back and forth. So you get this kind of interlacing or weaving going on at the top until I can't do any more like there. So I rather like that one. But simple things like filling them with a checkerboard pattern would be work would work. And there are flowers that have checkerboard patterned petals, fritillaries. Fritillaries they're called. The ones that I'm aware of. And they really do. They have patterns of squares on their petals. Rather lovely. Quite different but lovely. So there we are and I've got a couple more there for any other ideas. And you can do the same in these where we've got these sections. I could for example fill those with perks inside or with this one I'm going to do little arches that curve upwards and perhaps do every other one filled with black. If I'd had a bit more space I'd have left a, a white gap in the middle but just to add that interest. So lots of possibilities, the same here. Um, simple patterns, find simple patterns work the best. So here I'm going to fill this with lots of smaller and larger circles and keeping the smaller ones to the edges and putting the larger ones towards the middle and that then makes it feel that the, the ones at the edge look close together there's more ink so it makes them feel like they're further away so you get that feeling of curving again and even just with simple lines I could fill this with lines all the same distance apart but if I make the ones at the edge close together and have a larger, gradually larger towards the middle and then getting closer again, then I get that illusion that that might be curved. It suggests curving. Because our minds like to assume these lines are all equally distant, but whatever they're on has been curved or you know, bent in shape. So those are fun. I think they're fun, but I'm easily pleased. OK, are we up for something that's a little bit more complicated do you reckon? I reckon so because things are only as compli they're only complicated when you see them in their entirety to begin with but when you break it down into simple steps simple shapes or simple um, line shapes things really really aren't as complicated as you think they are well they can be but again it's just practice and taking it one step at a time so I did draw some daisy-like flowers. So I started with this for the centre and I put some stripes around it, which I've curved to match the shape of the bottom, which is curved. It's not as curvy as this, but it is still curved rather than straight. And then I'm going to pop some petals around, which are you. The letter U's, big, long, thin letter U's, but the top here is narrower than down here. So let's do the same again. That actually looks like a mushroom. So again, it's a letter U. I'm just drawing it backwards so I can get the spacing between them correct. And I don't know if you notice, but they're sort of like they're forming an arc here. And this one is shorter than this one. This one's in between the two in length. And then we'll do another one here, which will be smaller again. 
and then the last one there. So it looks like they'll, if there's another one here, it's hidden behind this. Just move it down, sorry. It's hidden behind this. So let's go this in, in this in direction. I'm sounding like Jar Jar Binks. Listen, listen. Lisa, so glad to be seeing you. I promise that's the only Star Wars reference I'll make in this video. Possibly. So I did exactly the same here. I don't think I've got the same number. Of one, two, three, four. One, two. I have. I've actually got the same number on each side. So it can remain like that. And I'll go through drawing it again. Just put three lines in the middle. So I end up with four sections. That's all. The, the number doesn't matter. I could put a fifth one there. Actually, I quite like that because then I'd get, um, I like odd, odd numbers. So let me just pop these in again. Everything I like to draw, well, I say everything, but what I'm showing you are things that are very stylized. We're taking inspiration from nature but we're not drawing strictly observational drawings here. Now, instead of having gaps between these, we can draw some little loops in between them as if there's other petals hidden behind them. So we've got a double layer there. And that means then we can actually fill that little gap as well. And we need a stem. And a stem here. Cunningly, I've hidden the stem underneath the petal. I'm getting a bit off screen. Do you know, it's been cloudy all morning. I kid you not, we've had rain and all sorts. And suddenly the sun decides to come out when I'm filming. I'm sorry, I'm going to say you're going to have to put up with it because the clouds are coming over again. So I'm not going to fuss around you. I'm just going to have a bit more tea. These petals are this shape going back to my drawing but we could make them flatter on the end heart shaped we could make them flat with a little bump on the end we could make them more triangular on the end we could even make them look like the end is curled up and over. Or we could actually do that as if the side has curled in a little bit. This is a funny little shape. I guess it's mostly like a, a very wide, flat, rounded W or a little wave. And colour and shadow will lift that up and make it look like it's folded over. I wouldn't necessarily do this on every petal. You could do and make a pattern of it. But every now and again, just pick one so it makes the petal look a bit different. Especially if you've gone, oh no, that petal should have been longer. It could have been longer, but it's filled up. Put that on the end. Leave too much space between them and it looks awkward. Add this to suggest that the petal has curled up like there. And um, if I pop one in here like that, that gives me that suggestion that perhaps that one has curled up a little bit and you can have fun with them. And then when you add colour and so on. Same as we can add pattern to these. I could add some stamen here and choosing where I put them, where they're visible. This one a lot more be hidden. This one perhaps there and I wouldn't bother there. And again with these we can have all of these shapes however you want or however many circles you'd like there because you could pop two or even a third one on the end. I quite like that piling them up. Um, it's just something a bit different. And of course on the 
stem we're going to need some leaves. Now the leaves I chose to do for this, check, did I? Oh I had honk, honking great big ones at the bottom. Much bigger than this. But I start by drawing the stem in because that will help me position the leaf um, in a way that allows it to attach to the stem. Just curves on the other side. This one's more of an S shape, whereas this one's more like a, a hill. And then I've put lots of lines in, not worrying about if they're equidistant, deliberately putting groups of them close together, leaving a bigger gap, just for interest here, and not trying to match them up on the other side, because in my little world, this adds interest and um, also adds spaces for colouring. It is a colouring template after all. On others, um, these ones I did put stems on. So if I add a stem here, for these ones I put leaves on that are kind of kite shaped. So if this was a kite, you'd have this end with ribbons or the little bows on and the shorter end there. But with a leaf, I've put the short end attached to the stem. I like that shape. I use that a lot. So that's fun. So look at that. I've done all of those. And these are base. These are actually these are all the flowers I've used in one template. Let me just turn the other one over because I have done two. I've got one ready for next week, which will give me a little bit more time. Oh yeah, talking of simple flowers, let me move this just down a bit. How about this for a simple flower? A circle. I'm going to put a U shape underneath. Just turn this over so I can check. Fab. A stem, I want a thick stem here, and then I'm just going to pop a band around them. I could fill that up. With a lot of bands, so I've got plenty of opportunity for adding colours. Perhaps I'll start part way down, so we get part of the top there done. I said this sun was going in. It's obviously not cooperating with me, is it? The weather never li never listens. I could go all the way to the bottom, like so. I could do a band across the middle that has narrow lines on either side and again let's pull that down that's the sun disappearing again Mo knowing my luck it'll be back out anytime soon yep and here comes the sun again and then i'm going to do one here where i add stripes at the top to down to about the middle of this and then I'm going to add some stripes going the other way just for fun. I think which ones did I use in this one I think I just used I did I just used single bands but I arranged them at different positions so some of the flowers had them close to the top some had them further down and others had them right the way at the bottom and different distances between. They're all the same flower, but they're all different. And I, if I remember rightly, yeah, for these, the leaves I put on were these rounded teardrop shapes, like so. I think they resemble one of the versions of Flux. I think it's flux and zen tangle and 
You put patterns like that in, like this, just straight lines or a line with a circle at the end. I filled that circle in, but you could leave it open. So you could add a splash of colour there. We could pop a shape at the end like that. I've got a circular shape there or something that's a bit more V-shaped. Whatever you can imagine can go there. It really can. Perhaps instead of at the top, we could put that at the bottom. So either like that, or a couple of them, or perhaps one and a section. These look like, that looks like a nose. They look like weird noses. Okay, what other flowers did I do? Because it's always nice to share. And it's not like they're unique or only. I'm sure other people have drawn many of these. They're out there. So I'm going to start with a circle again and I did two variations of this. One, I just put three petals on the top and a simple straight stem and just some simple leaves on there. I think that's what I did. This circle here begs for some something in it. So I could combine it with what we've just done and add some stripes. Or we could add a, a circle there. I've left gaps between these petals, but we could close them up and perhaps change the shape of the petals. I've left a, hopefully a smaller gap there. And this time I'm going to put a single line like that and then perhaps a couple of shapes like this, which help to enhance that circular shape and perhaps just to help that there might be another layer of petals behind, something like that. That looks a bit awkward, to be honest with you. I think it's too spherical. I think it needs to be more like this. It gives that, it's almost like we'd want these to carry on all the way round, which means we'd end up with ones like this, like these. But it's fun to play with and to see what happens. Another one I did, well, partly did, was one like this but with little petals all the way around. I quite like this. I find a large flower centre with tiny petals, oops, sorry, off screen, a bit very cute. I'm gonna draw a couple. And you can vary where that circle is inside and the shapes of the petals. Here, I'm still making them quite small, but I'm making them narrower. And the first one I drew, so there's a lot more petals around there. Just simple variations and we get a different feeling of our flower. And perhaps instead of one circle in the middle, we could put two. And then I'm going to do some really big petals around here. And they may not all be the same size, but it's fine but all done in basically the same way. And again, it's just playing around with things. We could pop in the centre, a stripy centre, and perhaps add some long, thin, rather rectangular or squarish shaped petals going around it. And they're not perfect. They're not perfectly the same. This one's got an angle at the top. This one has two. This one has got a bit of a bend in it. But it works. So it's, they're good for playing. This is just have fun. I'm sorry, I'm off camera again. I hope you caught that one. Um,
just going to fill this around with some heart shapes. Not very good ones because I'm drawing in my sketchbook. I'm actually in the middle of this sketchbook. I've got, got more or less to exactly the middle of it, which means that it's quite comfortable to work across double pages because the pages are level, but I've still got a big height above the table. So something like that and perhaps between these we could put little V shapes because they might be leaves behind or just a different kind of petal. My world, your world, do as you wish. Just checking to see whether there were, oh yeah, no, I've done those ones. Is there any others? Oh, we've got big circles here. What about a small circle? And perhaps with just three petals coming off or a shape like this, which looks like we've got leaves underneath all, strictly speaking, sepals. And then ones like this, perhaps we could put four or five there. So actually, I'm just going to have six to make it look balanced. And long and thin, whatever you feel makes it look fine. I just think it's a nice way of just doing very simple flowers. The other flower, oh, two more flowers. The next one, I'm going to draw a big circle again. Pop a circle somewhere inside here, and then we're going to draw a circle, a uh, circle, petals within that circle, not touching the outside edge of the circle in this case, but just inside it, just as something a bit different, and just pop a stem on there. I haven't put any petals on these necessarily. Petals, they're not petals, they're leaves or stems here. No, sometimes I don't put them. If I've got enough flowers overlapping, I don't put stems in because the background space gets really complicated. And um, a single stem looks quite whimsical with this huge flower on the top. You could put a double stem in, you can make it thin, wide. You could have a, a stem that branches. Okay, what was the other one I was going to do? That one. This is kind of going back to where we started where we had the central part of the flower and here I'm going to do it this but I'm going to join them all together like so so in this case we've got like a propeller and then I really I'm going to follow around this shape with the lines like so do that again So I'm going to draw three teardrop shapes together and then just follow the shape around twice. But it's also quite nice just to do these. with Just one of them. One outline. And just like the others I've done, just move this over so I'm on camera. You can add as many of these as you like, as long as you can fit them in, in a way that satisfies you. So we've got four here. So they are very similar to what I started with. Except this time we're just joining these together to make almost like a little flower in here and perhaps this one I'm just going to draw around. So in some ways they're akin to this, they're a simpler version. So plenty of options here. Just have a look. Anything else that I drew? I think so. But I've got two pages of variations here. Some 
um, more complex than others and some that perhaps I could go back and have a look now we're adding pattern to some of them I did here so here with these I could add some perks here in alternating stripes and at the top as well so we can squash them in so that gives some pattern there what I think I'd like to do as well is just split this up as well that just that big white band there just felt it always feels a bit clunky to me whereas just putting a simple line in or a fine board around each of these it makes it does make a difference and I am going to apologize for the bright light coming in and but we're okay oh it's my mug of tea casting shadows as well you can also do fills like Shattuck Shattuck like this which is one of my favorite things to do and again I think I'll split that section and then do another one here and I think I'll leave the top sections as they are shall I yeah I will because if I split this one perhaps I can just put a little bit there that makes it feel that we've got some um, pattern going on same can be done in the petals as we did elsewhere it's useful to use a finer pen for doing this i've used a very bold food a pen brush pen it's not the boldest you can get but it for me it's a bold pen and it's good that i'm using them because it is forcing me to draw bigger and bolder something that i've always struggled with so the secret is use a bigger pen or wider pen so that instantly makes that look a lot more complex just as these little curls have here it's about these okay well in the same way we could add patterns to these and i am going to add extra border lines for this i think we'll go checkerboard fashion but within that stripe that's very whimsical. This is much, very much a feature of, of, of very, very often a feature of quite whimsical sort of, um, what do you call it? Art journal work is black and white squares and black and white stripe, you know, patterns and edges and borders and so on. But I really do like it. So, and carry on with that whimsical black and white striping idea or black and white idea. Let's fill these stripes in, but leave a little space in the middle for a bit of highlight. I've left the highlight right in the middle of these lines, and in hindsight, it might have been better if I'd popped it off to one side. You put it, pop it off to one side, it makes it feel a bit more that you've got um, some volume going on. I'll show you with this one. So perhaps I've got one line. And another one. So I'm imagining them bending around the shape of the ball. So if I have my pen, my finger here, and I moved it round a ball, it would move in this curved direction. So I'm making the highlights appear in the same curved direction. That's something you can't get your head around. Just do them in the middle, but keep them one above the each other, more or less. A little bit off from one side to another adds a bit of, you know, like that that variation, that humanness, that naturalness, and it adds a feeling that perhaps that sphere isn't quite as smooth as I thought it might have been. You see, just just that little bit of white, and suddenly. That helps, that gives that hint that this might be quite spherical. Here, I'm tempted to put the lines that way, but I'm actually going to do them this way. Diagonal lines, 
between the sections. So I am joining them up and making sure they sort of like they go round. So we've got that kind of texture going on. And if we wanted to, if I want to increase that feeling of um, texture, of volume, of dimension, then I can fill these in in the kind of checkerboard pattern again, or chessboard pattern. Um, this is a this is used in Zentangle. Jonquil, I think, is the name of it. J O N. Q A L. Oh, I missed there. I've got that. Those going. It's fine. It works. You get the idea. And of course, these things aren't the only things that we can add pattern to, because we can do the same. We can do that with leaves. Because why not? So I'll add Shattuck on that side and I'll just add another line there to separate it. I'll leave the other side blank. So this one shad feels like it's in shadow. The other one feels like it's catching the light. This one, I'll do that in black and add that highlight. That highlights enough to suggest that this might be more curved. I'll put another line there and perhaps one there just to separate them. This one here, I'm just going to pop a little black seed inside. And perhaps just another like there and I think you're beginning to get the idea well I hope you are it's just seeing what you can do with all of these things they're um I keep saying this but they really are fun to play with if I take one of these petals here then this is perfect as well for using the tweed with starting at the widest point and going up to the narrowest point but creating this woven pattern within the petal if i was going to do this on more than oh if i was going to do this on every petal in a flower i'd make sure there was a um a, bo a border a boundary around it like these so it separates one petal from another or like this which i'd have to draw in before i did this and then the petal next door, you'll be able to tell the petals apart, it, otherwise you'll just end up with a, a mass of lines. Um, this one, just begs for that to be done to it. And then on either side, we can do something here. I'm going to put just simple arches in. It's like writing the letter M after one after another many, many times. Mm. But it gives a nice pattern. But if we do it the other way around, I'll, there. this one we've got the U-shapes pointing outwards. What about if we have the tops of the M's pointing inwards? So I suppose we're doing W's. Just by turning that pattern round, we get a different feeling to our leaves. Well, I think we do. Not quite sure which one is best, but we've got options, haven't we? It's all about trying things out and seeing how they work. This here, I'm going to turn this one into a hole. But this one here, I'm going to turn into something that looks like it's a little stuck up. It's always sticking up rather, a little stuck up, which is fun. And this one, I'll move it over. I'll make this line here top and towards the right of this inner circle thicker. But this one, I'll make them thicker to the left and underneath. And then we've got this definite heavy ring there. Well, it's heavy because I've made these thick and exaggerated them. But this can be done even on, get me other pen. Flexible pens make this so much easier. 
like so. Uh, gone a bit too far round, but you get the idea. We can put that in and change how something appears. So line thickening is, is fun to do as well. So here I'm doing the left and the bottom. Left or bottom or both, depending on where the leaf is around the, pet, around the flower. So I've now got that feeling that this flower has got is sitting up above this disc behind it. And if I thicken the left and the bottom of this disc, it gives it some volume as well. Now I've done that with a black line, but if I drew it, let me do this with a finer pen. If I drew that in as an outline, then it looks like I really have got a petal or petal, a flower on a disc, like so, not so well drawn, but you get the idea I think. And then I've put the stem part way inside that rim, so that's fun, it looks like a lollipop. Oh, you could, didn't see any of it, I'm so sorry. <sighs> I'm having a... I'm having a bad time with filming these last few days, isn't I? Right, so a circle like that. And then I can draw almost like a crescent moon on that side. I put the flower in the, or the centre of the flower towards the centre. I can draw the flower on that disc. And then the stem. I need it to connect to the centre of this rim, this edge, rather than coming from the top or the bottom of it, because it's like there's a stick going through the middle of it. So it's a bit like a lollipop. Not exactly sure whether you call them lollipops in America but you know that you get flat discs of um, hard candy of, um, and with a stick in the end you can lick it so lots and lots of variations and I can't show you them all because I've got them on my my book which is huge well it is huge opens out I'll take a photograph of it um, in its entirety so you can see it all and um, use that as the beginning and end screen. So I hope you found this useful. I haven't done any shadows or anything else because I, this is I'm nearly an hour already but um, things you can use for your own drawings whether you tackle something that's as big as A4 whether you go back to ATC size which is what I did yesterday and I will explain more about ATCs in another video. Um, I'm not going to remake that video or do a voiceover or whatever. It's there as it is because I will do more ATCs and see where they go. So for now, thank you for joining me. Thank you for watching. Please look after yourselves and find time to be creative. And see you soon. Not tomorrow, Thursdays. No videos on Thursdays. Back on Friday. Take care now. Bye bye.